Okay, people, so just as it goes with this coronavirus outbreak, we've just received news. As we've just finished recording um, this preview for the game, supposed game tonight, that UEFA are now looking at maybe cancelling all European competition. Obviously, this has come to light as the whole Real Madrid team is now in quarantine after one of their basketball players was tested positive for the coronavirus. It is really ramping up. Obviously, safety is key, but as we get more information, obviously, you know the United stand, we will be there bringing that reaction to you. Feel free to take it, the preview that we just done uh, as the game, as, as I'm talking to you guys now, is still on. But um, who knows, in a few hours, that could be very much a different story. What's going on, people? Welcome to the United Stand and welcome to another road trip. We're here at the Tips Arena in Austria or the Linz Stadion, whichever you want to call it, man. And look, there's been loads about the coronavirus. I know, as you guys are watching from wherever in the world, it is ramping up. The, the US shutting down flights, Ireland shutting down the schools. But let's leave the coronavirus where it is for a second. I think it's obviously and rightly so dominated the headlines. But there is a football match to be played. We'll talk about the conditions in there and they close behind closed doors towards the end. I want to talk about us. I want to talk about the players, man. This could be the last game we see for a while, depending on whether the Tottenham games get gets called off or not. So let's talk about the game and the players and how we're going to approach this team. Europa League, round of 16 against Lask at the end of the day. It's business as usual in terms of there's a game to be played and we have to win or we have to get a positive result to take back to OT. Um, if the game's on. <laughs> but um, team selection wise, look, Tave Chong, I asked Oli in the presser about Angel Gomez. He's out here. Tave Chong's just signed a new deal. I want to start with him. I think it'll be important and interesting to see just how much game time now Tave Chong has committed his future to the club. Just how much game time he's going to get. I think this will be a perfect game to start him in. Um, you know, Lask, uh, look, they've beat Azel Alkema in the last round, but you know, quality-wise, we, we should be having the quality, regardless of whatever team we put out, to, to do a good job here against Lask and, and, and take care of our, our business. I think it'll be a chance for, for Chong to impress. It'll be a chance for him to kick on. Maybe with new confidence after new new discussions. Now he's got his head settled and, he's, and, he's, and his feet under the carpet with a long-term deal. How about he gets some game time? So I think it'll be interesting to see if he starts. I'd like to see him start. Angel Gomez, again, like Oli said, he wants to convince him to stay here. What better way to convince him to stay here than to start to play him in games like this? You would have thought over the course, the course of this season where we played the likes of Rochdale, we played the likes of Astana, Colchester and, and, and teams where you think the squad players can get games. Angel Gomez hasn't really featured as much as we would have thought as, and, and in the Premier League in, in games where we're in cruise control and stuff like that, Carabao Cup, etc, etc. The list goes on of the times where he could have played and we haven't really seen it. Again, if, if Angel Gomez is, is Amin Anar and he's seen his mate Taif Chong sign a contract, why not give him some game time here early against the last side that's not got their own fans behind them, the atmosphere is not going to be the same. Give him a start, you know, that, that would be, that would be Interesting to see as well. So I'd like to see maybe him start the game. Igalo, there's no Martial. We know he's injured. Um, we'll talk about him in a second. But for Igalo, he's going from strength to strength. Um, and the thing is with Igalo is, is that any time he's played in whatever capacity, he's played well. Whether it's a five-minute cameo from the bench or a three-minute cameo like it was against City, he's doing well. He's doing what he needs to do. He's impacting upon the game. And most importantly, when he started, he scored. So for me, I would I would certainly go over Igalo up, up top. Greenwood, another chance for him to shine. Um, we've seen what he's been doing coming in off the, uh, coming out of the out of the fringe side of the squad into into the first team um, for games like this, sort of tailor made. So I think in a game where we know we have to win, we know we want to bring or we have to bring a positive result back to Old Trafford. We want to play a strongish team, um, but we we know we need to mix the pack. We got Tottenham potentially, hopefully, still still coming um, on Sunday. So Solskjaer's got to think about that. Midfield, we saw Scott in the presser yesterday. I think usually the player that comes in the press conference usually starts the game. Not always, but mostly that happens. I think he should start the game. He's looking to keep returning to fitness, come off the bench late against City, got the goal, but to build his confidence and his fitness would be perfect for him to start today. Be a decent tempo, a decent outing for him. I think he can get some minutes in the tank. Um, Fred, I think, needs a rest, man. I mean, look, He's been absolutely brilliant this season. Absolutely brilliant this season. Like he's gone from strength to strength. I mean, I've, I'm sure loads of you have seen um, just how good he was against City and that video that was circulating with, with how good a performance he had. And he's just our engine room. He's looking like that £50 million player that we bought, maybe even more. He's, he was starting to see exactly why we bought him and his attributes. He's been fantastic. So for me, I think a, a much needed rest for him would be good. Um, maybe bring Matic in. Um, did Match play 90 minutes against him? Yeah, he did actually. So yeah, you may be looking at maybe Pereira could come in next to Scott, but I think I think Solskjaer will want to keep the balance. So I'll I'll just go with Matic and McTominay. Um, and it's weird with the Bruno situation as well because again, um, I was talking to um, a guy out here 
from England who runs a, a podcast out here looking at Austrian football. And he, and he said to me that um, Lask done very well and um, they actually played against Sporting um, and Bruno didn't play. And when he did play in the return leg, uh, Sporting won <laughs> um, with, with the help of Bruno. So, look, we know how important he is to us and, he, and we know how much we lack when he's not there. Do you start Bruno? you know, get the job done or, or, or get something to take home, get an away goal or, set, or, or, or whatever, get into the second uh, second half, take him off early in the second half. Maybe so, maybe you do, because look, at the end of the day, without Bruno at the minute, we're just not looking great. We're, we're just not, uh, you know, we're turning the corner defensively, turning the corner in terms of confidence and results, but there's no denying that without Bruno, the, the attacking element, it just seems to go. We saw that against Derby, we saw that against Bruges when he came on, we saw it at home when he started against Bruges and won 5 0. So all of the games that Bruno's coming into, he's really coming into his own. So really interesting to see how Solskjaer goes about the midfield options. I mean, Matter as well on matter this is a game made for him I think there's no reason why he can't start either from the right today or in number 10 position if, if Bruno is going to be absent um, maybe even play Bruno in a, in a six you know maybe play him next to McTominay play him slightly deeper um, and put matter in the 10 you know or the, the options are there we're in a good healthy position um, for the options to be there and, and the back four which is surely got to be a back four I don't think Solskjaer could be going with a back five um, for this game get in boys we're still going to do it we're still going to do it <laughs> <laughs> United lads are here in um, in full fashion. You know what I mean, it hasn't persuaded. And just on, on United, actually, fair play to the club. Massive, massive gesture to them. Fans have had to come out here. These guys haven't cancelled their trip, but a lot of Manchester United fans have cancelled their trip, obviously, with the coronavirus and the match being, being played behind closed doors. What the club have done is obviously refunded the ticket. But on top of that, they've paid £350 towards flights and accommodation, which is just automatically debited into the accounts of the United fans who've had to miss out today, which is a great touch. I think it's very important to remember that without the fans, football would be nothing. So great touch um, from the club. But back to the game. Look, at the end of the day, I think no disrespect to Lask, but I think we we, we should be we should be having a, a team strong enough to to get a positive result to bring back to OT next week, whether that game's behind closed doors or not. We await to see. Um, so I think Solskjaer can afford to mix the pack, but we've seen when he mixes it too much, the quality kind of drops down. But with with so many big games coming up and look, we don't know whether the Premier League's going to get cancelled or not, or just played behind closed doors. People need a rest, they do. Um, you know, you look at the international break coming up, that could probably be cancelled as well. I think uh, the England against Denmark game is going to get cancelled at Wembley. So, you know, there's, there's scope for a little bit of rest, but we still need to have the players' best interests at heart. And I think Solskjaer can definitely miss the pack, as he's been doing in the Europa League throughout the, um, throughout the, whole, throughout the whole campaign, really. So for me, Bring in some changes. I'd like to see a Galo start. I'd love to see one uh, Chong start. Reward him for the new, the new contract. Why, why not? Um, love to see Matt start the game. And Angel Gomez. Maybe even Angel Gomez in the ten. You know, put Bruno on the bench. Put Angel Gomez in. Try. Give, give him a run. Give him a run. Let's see what what Angel can do. I think he has travelled. I'm pretty sure he has travelled. So, so why not? On to the big talking point now. Oh look, the game is going to be behind closed doors. And I kind of feel a little bit for Lask. You know, this is one of their biggest games in their history. I think the president set us right in their press conference sort of saying that this isn't their biggest game in the history. I think they, they had to win to stay up or win to get promoted or something. From Division three. To promote from Division 3, was it? To getting all, the way up. getting all the way up. So those were their biggest games. And fair enough in the history of them, but there's no denying that you look at the gate receipts that they would have got. They, their, their stadium, I think, houses 6,000 and they play their Europa League games here at the Linz Stadium, which is, I think, 20,000. So it means a lot to the club financially. And also, the people of Linz have been deprived the chance to come and see Manchester United, to come and see their team against Manchester United. How's that going to affect the players? I, it's, I, you know, Linz would have probably had a 12th man. It would have been rocking in there. It would have been an uncomfortable situation for United. You know what it's like travelling away in Europe. We saw how it was uncomfortable in the early stages in the Bruise match out there. Um, and, and we conceded early on. Is that? And, you know, the fans were on top. The, the team was on top. It's going to be surreal. It's going to be really surreal. I think for the players, some players coming out of under 23s football is not, not too long ago, like the likes of Mason, Chong, um, even, even this season, playing behind closed doors. It won't be too dissimilar for them, but like Scott said in the, in the press conference that it will be different. You're playing in front of 75,000 people normally and, and it's going to be really surreal. I mean, I looked at, I was, obviously we was all watching the Liverpool game last night um, with keen heads on, but I, I flicked over to watch the PSG um, and Dortmund game and it was just, you know, you're talking about elite level football just being played with nobody there. It's really weird. From a perspective of us, um, I think hopefully all is well with the media accreditation and Marin. I'm really looking forward to bringing you guys content from inside the stadium to, to see what that feels from a from a football perspective of, of 
of reporting on the game. You know, you guys are going to be watching it at home on BT Sports or, or whatever channel you're watching it on. You know, it's, it's going to be weird hearing the players be able to shout word for word, hearing Oli talking about tactics or or formation changes or, or maybe getting angry when, it, when there's a misplaced pass. Will they tone it down? Will will you know, now the mics are going to pick up absolutely everything and you're going to hear what they're going to have to say. Is that going to change the, the way that, you know, they, they conduct themselves? That's going to be really interesting. All these things, man. Um, but ultimately, it, cut, it, it works more for the away team. It's really the home team who's obviously losing out in, in these fixtures, you know. You, the, the part of it is having your home advantage and, and Linz don't really have that. Linz don't have that at all. They don't have any of their fans there. So I feel it for them. I feel it for the financial strain of it and... With the breaking news today, I don't even know what's breaking as you guys are watching this, but I've seen a um, breaking news that, you know, Boris Johnson, the UK Prime Minister, is, is, is going to be ramping up the coronavirus, um, you know, how, how we're dealing with it and, and, and making a statement. Ireland are shutting their schools for two for two weeks. So I can I can see that um, the games are probably going to be postponed or played behind closed doors for the, for, the, for the foreseeable. It hasn't been announced yet. That's just my gut feeling and my opinion. And... What, 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 what effect is that going to have on the rest of the teams? You look at teams that are fighting for their lives. You look at teams like Watford, look at teams like Norwich, Aston Villa, Brighton, Bournemouth, etc. Fighting for their lives. Their 12th man's usually going to carry them over the line. In a relegation battle, what, what's that going to have? You look at teams in the Championship trying to get up. You look at maybe Leeds or Fulham or, or Brentford or whoever, you know, Nottingham Forest or whoever's in the playoffs trying to get up. It's got a knock-on effect all the way down the leagues. I don't think we can just postpone everything and just finish the league. I don't think that's fair. Behind closed doors, I think the game should be played, but it's difficult because without fans, that's what makes it. Teams going without money, revenue, you know, teams maybe down the bottom on a match day, the revenue that it generates is absolutely huge. But then again, the money, I think what should happen is that we go, OK, well, everything is televised, though. Every single game is on the TV. Red button, choose your match. Um, if, you're, if you're familiar with Sky, when you can do that. Maybe we look at doing that um, in terms of... You can watch all the games, so every 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 team gets a chance to every set of fans get a chance to to see their team televised. It's not fair that you know um, Bournemouth or Brighton fans or Aston Villa fans can't go to a relegation scrap um, to support their team. But obviously, the bigger clubs like Manchester United, like Man City, Liverpool, Tottenham, Arsenal, etc., Chelsea, um, their games are televised just because of the size of the clubs and it's a more bigger it's a bigger global reach. So for me, that's an issue. I don't think that that would be fair to, for those teams to not get televised. So with the coronavirus thing, it's obviously going to affect our games. We might, we might see our games get cancelled, which is going to be a big disappointment or played behind closed doors. But to be honest, it's tough. It's tough. I feel it, I feel it for, the, for the sides who are fighting relegation, like I said, um, who their fans will be the 12th man. You know, Manchester United being the biggest club in the world, the revenue that we're going to generate from putting the, t the, the games on TV around the world, it might not affect us that much, but for the smaller teams, it absolutely will. So we'll have to see. Um, but the main thing, we just hope everyone stays safe. You know, I've got older grandparents. We've all got people in the family that are older and that's the people it can really affect or people with respiratory or underlying health problems. I know it might seem like it's a big overreaction. It started off obviously in China and you're thinking it's all the way in China. It's not really going to make its way to us. And now it's taken over the world. It's a pandemic. So I think we have to take it seriously. And yes, we're all football fans and we want to see our team play. Um, and we can, all, we can all have that bit of ignorance and think, well, why can't the games go on? But at the end of the day, health is obviously much more important than football. And people are really dying from this. It, it really is affecting people. And that's, that's one of the biggest things. At the end of the day, Oli's only going to do what the authorities tell him to do. Manchester United are only going to do what we're told to do. Um, if we're told that we have to play games behind closed doors, we have to. It's as simple as that, you know? There's nothing more we can do. There's nothing more we can say. We just have to wait and see what happens from there. So, at the end of the day, from a point of behind closed doors, we'll see what the content's like. We'll see what the game's like. It's going to feel weird. It's going to be surreal watching it with, with nobody there. But at the end of the day, the game is still being played. It's two-legged time. We need to take something positive back to OT. And I'm, and I'm pretty confident we can do that no matter what team we put out. Drop your views in the comments with, uh, with your predicted lineups, what you think Oli should go with, how you think he should shuffle the pack, considering you know we've got people carrying injuries. There's, there's games that have been played that people have, are tired. And obviously, it's Europa League. We want to see the likes of Mason come in, likes of Gomez, likes of Chong. We want to see these players given a chance. Let me know what you guys think about that. And we will see you, hopefully, with some content inside the ground. Peace. Big thank you to you guys for watching the latest of our videos. And if you want to check out more, make sure you do that just to the right of me. We are the biggest and best Manchester United channel in the world. Make sure you check us out on all of the socials as well. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and YouTube. The socials are along the bottom. Peace.